uh, Jovan, our next speaker, and I'm myself, I'm Ish. Girish, it's up to you now. Okay, so we have with us you, uh, get us a talk about monitor elderly people using the ESP32 microcontroller, how you can do it yourself. So it will be mostly a demo, I think. A few words on our speaker. Jovan Fauder is a technology enthusiast. He shouldered the various managerial responsibilities in technology-oriented companies. Jovan is also the founder of Generation Plus Limited and co-founder of the Mauritius Maker Community. He's a really interesting person. I will now pass on to him to elaborate a bit and then start with the presentation. Hello, everyone. Good morning. So today I'm going to talk uh, about uh, a device that you can make yourself around uh, a microcontroller. So pr prior to that, I'm just going to uh, introduce myself. So I'm uh, really a person who likes technology. I've been involved. Okay. Uh, so the agenda today is going okay. to, I'll talk a little bit about uh, the Mauritius Maker community, uh, the maker space, and how we actually are going to assemble that device. The Mauritius Maker community actually was founded during the launch of the first DevCon six years ago. And uh, this is our Facebook page. So I would encourage you to join in on that page if you want to build something. So the maker is actually building things. Okay. And uh, there has been a growing interest in the maker movement. And we have reached, uh, since last I checked, like 700 members. We uh, mostly host uh, meetups and free training. Everything is free, actually around Arduino IDE, microcontrollers, 3D printing, and IoT. So, yeah, uh, with respect to this, what I found was that uh, there was no maker space in Mauritius. So what I decided to do is like to have a mini maker space here in uh, Generation Plus, which is uh, the company that I founded some years back and uh, to have some facility that was not uh, easily available or not affordable for people as well. So uh, we've got a maker space and we've got tools like 3D printers, oscilloscope, multimeters, crimping tools, and so on. And we also have got like a training space and video projector and whiteboard. So feel free to contact me if you are interested in re renting uh, those spaces. I would be glad to help you, and I've done some tutoring of uh, of students from uh, university as well in this maker space to help them really better understand electronics and so on. So now back to the device uh, that I will be demoing will be uh, like uh, uh, something built around a microcontroller that will actually be used. Uh, to monitor if there is activity around old people. So what we know is that uh, they may have some sort of health issues. And uh, when they stop moving, this is when we know that there is something that is wrong. So uh, the, this device has got uh, a passive infrared sensor and it monitors constantly movement around it. So uh, it can be placed uh, like in a place where you know that person is going to walk by and trigger that device. So typically it can be used in a kitchen, bathroom, or even a TV room. So there has been uh, in, uh, in the coding that I've done, two severity thresholds are set. Like for example, if that person doesn't move for uh, let's say one hour continuously, so we'll call that level one severity. And the device will send an email to a person and informing that person that there has been no movement for that period of time. And let's now say like severity level two is like for one and a half hour, there has been no movement. So you really need to take action and try to see if there's something wrong with that person or not. So 
uh, the email is part of uh, of the device functionality, and we'll look into uh, that uh, uh, that function. How we can integrate it on a simple microcontroller later in this slide. Okay, so uh, the structure will be uh, going through is going to be like we'll talk about the electronic components it's like lego blocks that you use to build something so each uh, electronic component would be having its own uh, its own functionality so we'll talk about uh, the different components that we have used and what are their functionality then once We've uh, done that, we'll move to the wiring and creating the device itself. How does different electronics between themselves, okay? Then we'll talk about uh, the coding environment. Uh, we will be using the Arduino ID. And uh, because the microcontroller itself is an ESP32, it is not by default uh, present as a board that you can program in the Arduino ID. So we'll look into how to add this board, which is not natively supported in the ID. Then we'll move to the code. We'll see about uh, the libraries and uh, the different function that makes this device. So let's start with the main say let's say the main part which is not actually an electronic device it is just a board where you are going to put different kind of electronic components on it and you are going to connect it so a breadboard it is called a bread uh, you just plug in components we are going to see that live afterwards not now how you plug in the different components and you use those jumper wires that you see here to interconnect them. So the main part of this circuit is the microcontroller. So just to tell you about microcontrollers, there are different kind of microcontrollers. So you've got Arduino microcontrollers, and uh, you've got uh, other microcontrollers as well. Uh, what you need to know is uh, that microcontrollers uses two, mainly two kinds of logic voltage. So there's one which is 3.3 volt and others are 5 volts. So the one that we'll be using is the ESP32 module. It has got 5 megabytes of memory on board and has got Wi-Fi inbuilt and Bluetooth as well as wireless connection channels. So microcontrollers by themselves, they need to be connected to other devices uh, like sensors and actuators. By sensors, I mean like uh, something that is going to sense the environment. So uh, let's say, for example, there's a temperature sensor so a temperature sensor will sense the temperature around it. Actuators are actually things that are going to output things, like switch on the light, or like uh, switch on a relay uh, that is connected to a fan, for example. So those are actuators. So in IoT, Internet of Things, we often refer to those two main components sensors and actuators. Actuators actuate, sensors they sense. Okay, on a microcontroller like the ESP32, you can add lots of sensors. It all depends on the communication channel that you will be using. So, for example, your sensor can be like a remote device that is connected to Bluetooth or it can be physically connected to the microcontroller. So when it is physically connected to the microcontroller, there are protocols that are being used for that. So one very common protocol that we use and that we'll be using with our device is the I2C protocol. So 
I squared C is just a two wire connection. Okay, so your device is going to communicate with two wires and you can in parallel add additional I squared C device. By that I mean that you've got uh, like, uh, let's say, an extension plug. Okay, and then you can plug in your TV, you can plug in your uh, game console and so on on the same plug. So it is the same as I square C. So what you need to know in I square C also is that each device will have a unique address, meaning that we are going to address them uniquely by using their address. Okay, so let's move to the next slide now. All right, so most of uh, our microcontrollers, they do not have like an internal clock. They do not know like the time, the current time. So to achieve this, we will be using an external device. It is called an RTC module. So the RTC module that we'll be using is a DS3 Two, three, one. Its working voltage is 5 volt, but do remember that I told you that the microcontroller has got a 3 volt free logic. So we are going to deal with that, how we are going to power this device. I square C is no problem, so we'll connect it to I square C directly onto the chip. So uh, this uh, RTC module has got a backup battery, meaning that if you switch off your device, it's not going to lose its time, okay? It's going to continue to run on this small battery that is integrated here in the holder. So powering off your device does not mean that you will lose time. It will keep on working even if the device is not powered. Then, the next sensor, it's a sensor actually, it is a PIR, commonly known as a PIR, Passive Infrared Module, is the device that is going to be used to see if there is movement that has been detected. Okay, so there are actually two settings that you can do with that device, all right? So there is the delay timer, okay, and the sensitivity or the distance with which it will react. So the sensitivity is like I'm going to be like, I want it to be triggered if I'm, for example, one meter from it, but not more than one meter from it. So we adjust the sensitivity with this, with this uh, potentiometer here, okay. And the delay timer as well can be adjusted here. So you will see that there is a VCC, the voltage goes in, the power goes in here, and the ground here. And what, is, what it is going to output is just a signal. It's going to turn high whenever it detects a movement. So the working voltage is 5 volt. And remember what I said, that the ESP32 is actually 3.3 volt. So we would need to adapt that. And we will see in uh, the wiring in the future slides how this is going to be done. And the connection is not I square C. It is just going to be a GPIO port. So a GPIO port on the microcontroller is a port that you can configure as being an input of data or as being an output, okay? In our case, for the PIR, we will be using the GPIO as an input because when somebody is going to go near that sensor, it is going to tell the microcontroller on a GPIO port that it has detected some movement. So it is an input for the microcontroller. All right. Uh, so, we'll be using an OLED display as well for displaying information on that screen. 
Okay, so OLED is organic light emitting diode display, and uh, it uses the I square C protocol. So as you can see here on the drawing, there's VCC always, and there's ground. So this device is powered by five volts, and the connection is made as a protocol. So this little display is quite small, and you'll be able to see it afterwards with the camera, has got a resolution of 128 by 64 pixels. So you can even display graphics on it if you want to, but for our for the purpose of this demo, we'll be only displaying text. Then let's move to the other electronic component. So it's it's a simple buzzer. Actually, you just power it with five volts, and what it does, it just sends a beep, like beep. We'll see how it works. And the connection is a GPIO. So remember, yeah, 3.3 volt, this is 5 volt. How are we going to adapt that? We'll see it afterwards. And here what is important to note is like, we are going to configure the GPIO as an output port because it is going to emit something, a voltage on that buzzer for it to, to sound the, the beep, okay? Next slide. So this is the magic. This is where all the magic will be. Because you see, we've got a microcontroller which has got uh, a voltage logic of 3.3 volt. Okay, and we've got devices, okay, that are going to be connected to it that would work only on five volts. So we will be using a logic level shifter. What this device does is that whenever 3.3 volt is an input, it will send 5 volt on its output. So by four channel, four device can be connected either way. So if it gets 5 volts here, it is going to send 3 volts to the microcontroller. If it needs to send free volt from the microcontroller and the device that is connected to it requires requires 5 volt it is going to shift that logical level here for the device to get the proper voltage so how this is wired it's simple you just give it like an input of 3.3 volt and an input of five volts and a common ground to it. And then whatever you put on this side, which is 3.3 volt, will come out as five volt. Okay, so it's as simple as that. Simple logic shifter for us to be able to interface devices that works on different voltage. Okay, now we'll go through the wiring of everything. I hope that you will be able to see it clearly. It's not quite a big uh, diagram, but here we go. This shows you how everything is wired. I will push that to a GitHub account so that you can not only have the code, but you will have also the drawings of how everything is wired. And if you want to make your own, yeah, sure you can make your own and you can modify the code as well. So when we look at, this is our main device. This is our microcontroller. We'll be powering it with a USB cable here. Uh, so what I'm going to tell you is like USB from any USB device is going to give you five volts. So the five volts is going to power this device. But do remember that I've told you that this has got a free volt free logic. So we've got like a circuit around here that is going to transform that five volt, okay, and step it down to 3.3 volt for that microcontroller not 
to fry. So if you power a device, uh, let's say 3.3 volt, you power it uh, with 5 volt, you are going to burn this device. So this step down regulator is going to transform that 5 volts, okay, and give 3.3 volts. But the 5 volts is also going to be present for you to be able to connect your devices. So this is why here, before going to uh, the to the regulator here, the 3.3 regulator, you can have your 5 volts that is being supplied by uh, the USB. Okay, so you will see we are going to power all our 5 volts devices from the spin that is written 5 volts here. So the first one is going to be the sensor, all right? So the sensor works on 5 volt, if you remember well from the slide. So it is connected here via a wire. Then we are going to connect other devices on 5 volts here. So we go through the logic level shifter here and we connect that device here. So we are supplying 5 volts here. And to power up, that converter, that logic shifter. And here we've got a 3.3 volt output. Okay, so the 3.3 volt output is going to power up the device from this side as well. All right. So remember, I told you, like, uh, okay, our buzzer has got five volts, works on five volts. So we are going to connect it to one of the output of this logic shifter on the 5 volt side. Okay, so we talked about GPIOs and, and what are the different outputs. Okay, so this one for the output of the PIR, we have to go, because it outputs 5 volt, we have to go to the logic shifter here. So it goes on one port of the logic shifter gets converted to 3.3 volt and is connected to a GPIO, which is here. All right, so there is that conversion. We've seen for an output, we go the other way around. So GPIO here connected to logical shifter goes to the buzzer. This is an output. GPIO configured as an output here, all right? And this is as an input, so you see that it is on the other side. So 5 volts get in here, goes through the logic and the logic shifter and goes to the GPIO here. So you would see that everything is wired that way. And uh, yeah, uh, one more thing is like, uh, you've seen, like I think I mentioned that it was actually five volts. It can be powered from 3.3 volts. So the OLED can be powered from 3.3 volts to five volt max. So that is why it doesn't go through the logic shifter. So that was uh, a mistake on my side. I didn't update the slide properly. So yeah, this one gets connected directly to the 3.3 volts rail on that microcontroller. Okay, so is uh, the case for this RTC device. So it goes directly to the 3.3 volts here. Okay, there's no need for a logic shifter. All right, let's move on to the next slide. Okay. Arduino IDE. So we'll be using Arduino IDE, which is uh, quite nice. You can actually, although natively doesn't support many boards, it supports mostly its own Arduino boards. So you can add third party boards uh, onto uh, this IDE so that you can program them in the in the same way that you do with Arduino uh, boards. So to do that, it's quite simple. So 
you go on to the file, the menu of uh, the Arduino ID, you go in File, Preferences menu, and then you just add this. So this is a repository, a JSON file, where you've got all the details of files and libraries and uh, other references that is going to be downloaded by this IDE. So file preferences menu and you just add this here, additional board URL here, you just add it and then your board will be found in the board list. All right. So libraries required to be installed via the tool manage library. So for us to be able to program those different components, we are going to include additional libraries. So to do that in the Arduino uh, ID, you go into manage library and then you can add the libraries by searching uh, online what are the libraries that you require. For example, if you type uh, uh, RTC DS 3231.h, you are going to see the libraries and you can choose which library to download. Actually, there are uh, different kind of libraries for the same device as well. So it's up to you to choose the right one. Okay, so uh, let's go through the library that we are currently using in uh, this sketch, in this in our code. So uh, the RTC DS3231.h is actually for addressing the RTC module, the real-time clock module, okay. Then we'll be using, for the OLED display, we will be using an Adafruit library, which is the Adafruit SSD 1306.h. So Adafruit, actually, what they do is they package uh, a lot of devices in one single library. So, yeah, you can download the whole package of uh, library from Adafruit, and this would include also... Uh, for the OLED. Okay, ESP32 mail client. Actually, this is uh, the mail client that will be sending like uh, emails alert. Okay, NTP client. So we'll be using the network time protocol just to update the real time clock. It will query a network time protocol server and pull the current time and update the RTC module if needs be. Okay, so network time protocol is interesting uh, due to the fact that it always has like the right time. You query it, you pick up the time, you update your RTC module. Okay, if you can't do that because the system has got a battery on it, if let's say, for example, uh, when you, you launch uh, the, the code, it was not able to connect to the NTP server or the NTP server was down, okay, it will rely on the RTC itself, the real time clock of that module, okay, and then, of course, because this battery backed up, it's going to give you approximately uh, the, the right time. Okay, so then we'll be using the Wi-Fi UDP.h. So uh, this is like uh, for the NTP client, this is a requirement that you have this module. So the Wi-Fi uh, UDP is a requirement for the NTP client, okay, because the NTP protocol uses UDP to query a server, and you need to have this in. Now we'll look at the code. All right, so uh, the program, uh, as we call it, normally we'll call it a program or the source code, 
in Arduino is referred to as a sketch. So we'll be referring to sketches when we talk about Arduino ID. Okay, so the source code is available freely. You can modify, you can do whatever you want with it. Okay, so the source code is available here. Oops, is available on the repository here. So feel free to copy it and modify it as you wish, enhance it, add more functionalities, okay, to it. So I was planning on doing something more about the elderly monitor was to like a medication reminder. So remember, we've got a small screen, we've got an RTC module. So what can be done with that device additionally than monitoring uh, like movement around an elderly person? You could put a medication reminder, okay? Meaning that that person at 11, for example, should take his medication. So you would program this into this system, into this device and say, okay, at that time I do a beep and I put a message that you should take your medication A, for example, all right? And that beep can remain on until, for example, you press on a button and you've acknowledged that you've taken your medication. So feel free to use this code, add those functionality. I haven't had time to do that, but I think it's something that could be very interesting. All right, so what we are going to do now is we'll go through the code and I will show you what module, what function does what. Okay, so now we switch on to the code. So we've already seen the NTP client uh, .h. Those are the libraries that we'll be loading. So how does Arduino work? Okay, we do a declaration okay, of our different variable that is going to be used. Then we've got the part that is the setup. And then we've got a loop. So a microcontroller, what it does, it moves from one point here, goes to another, to the, to the last point here, and then step forward again, step backward, I would say, move up back here and continue to execute the same logic in a loop, okay? This is how microcontrollers, they work, all right? So, yeah, so what we do here, we do all our declarations here. So, okay, so what are we going to define? We're going to define the OLED display. We're going to tell it that we've got a screen width of 128 and a screen height of 64. So this is defined here. And we will define a reset point. So this is kind of important when you are using the OLED and uh, the Adafruit library. All right, there are different kinds of uh, OLED displays. They are not all the same, all right? So this is important that you know what are the specification of your OLED to define it properly. If you don't do that, then the OLED would not work, all right? So the OLED that I've shown you in the picture uses an OLED reset on pin four here, okay? So then what, what, what we do, we call that function that library and with the different parameters and the OLED reset we see it here all right then we create we have created like a string okay which is here a global one because it is defined uh, in the declaration part of our sketch so we're going to define a global RTC date time so actually what this variable is going to store. It is going to store at a point in time when we will call a function, the current date and time, okay? So then we are going to define uh, the pin number 
on which like our passive infrared sensor is connected. So we'll be using GPIO 16 here. All right, so physically on the board, you will see it's written GPIO 16. Or if it's not, it depends on the different ESP32. You've got like uh, in the slide that I've shown you, uh, there is like a map which says this pin is GPIO, this pin is, uh, for example, UART, transmit, RX, and so on. So this refers, the number 16 refers to a physical, a physical connection on the ESP32, all right? And the buzzer is going to be, the actuator, uh, which is a buzzer, is going to be on pin 17. All right, so the first thing that uh, we'll do, we'll, we will update the time. We will query the time from the network time protocol server. So in our case, okay, we will be using africa.pool.ntp.org. So what we are saying it is that, hey, Okay, so uh, all the NTP server, they store time in GMT time, okay? So we're going to tell it, okay, we are querying you, but we are currently GMT plus four, okay? So this is what it says, four times 3,600 seconds, all right? Then we are going to instantiate uh, SMTP data as SMTP data here. Okay, so we are going, because it needs to connect to an access point, okay, so we are going to give it the credential for that access point. Here in the makerspace, we are going to tell it, okay, this is your SSID and this is the password. All right, and you'll be able to connect to that. So we'll see how we are going to call that function. Okay. And then we are going to tell it, hey, come on, RTC module, you, uses the, you use the two-wire protocol. Okay. This is what it says here in the line. Then we are going to set our different parameters into variable. So start hours is going to be when we start the device, okay? And end hours is going to be when we will stop our device. By that, I mean the monitoring action starts at 9 a.m. and ends at 23 uh, hours, so 11 p.m. So you can, you can, of course, lower this. It's up to you. Like, for example, you say, like, uh, that person will be all alone from nine to five, okay? So you would set nine here and 17 here. So the monitoring process and the sending of notification would only be done during that period of time. Okay, so here we will set our inactivity alert, okay? So remember I said we are going to have two thresholds so one threshold is going to be uh, set here in activity alert. It's just an alert saying, hey, there has been no movement for that specific amount of time. And hey, you need to be, you need to attend to that side because it has been uh, in the critical inactivity threshold, okay, that is being set here. So for the sake of uh, our demonstration, we are going to set 20 and 40 seconds. So everything here is set in seconds, okay? And then we're going to define the current hour, the current minute and the current second as an integer and Boolean as alert sent. So if we've set an alert, okay, uh, it is going to be in that variable, that Boolean here, okay? So it's critical sense. So if we've sent an alert, this is going to become true. And if we've uh, sent a critical uh, alert, so it is going to become true. All right. So this, those are just declaration. 
And when we start to monitor, uh, meaning in monitoring mode with respect uh, to the time that we've set here, the start hours and the stop hours, so uh, monitoring started will become true, okay? Uh, unsigned uh, alert melis, critical melis, we'll see about that if we have time. Okay, so uh, remember that uh, once we've finished with the declaration, uh, loading of uh, libraries declaration, we go through the setup phase. So the setup is, this is what we do here. We are going to tell it that uh, we can receive like uh, debug messages from uh, the serial port. So once you connect a device like uh, the mic this microcontroller, this ESP32, to your computer, it gives you a communication port. Okay, on that communication port, like this device can send messages. Like it's very important for debugging or for initial uh, programming of uh, of a project that you get a feedback of what is happening. And then afterwards, when uh, it goes into release, you can just remove those. So primarily, I use it just to have messages being sent to me. All right. So a delay. So once we've set that, we add a delay, because if we do it too quickly, it's like, uh, you won't be able to access this device. We are talking super rapid here. So we begin something and uh, you have to give it some time before you can access it, okay? Then you do an RTC beginning. So you start, you say, okay, uh, RTC module, now you begin. So we're going to set now a recipient uh, who is going to receive the email. So I put my Gmail account here. So whenever there's an alert, uh, whether it be critical or non-critical, it's going to send it to my email address. So remember that uh, we've defined the buzzer pin and we've defined the PIR pin. So we need to tell it now, because I told you, like it is a GPIO, it can be as input or output. This is where we now say, okay, for buzzer pin, you are going to be an output. You are going to output 3.3 volt for the buzzer, okay? And the PIR pin is going to act as an input. So meaning that you will be constantly monitoring that pin to see if there is an, a 3.3 volt on it, and then we'll have some logic that is going to process it. Okay, so here we'll do the Wi-Fi begin, the SSID and the password. So we will bring up our Wi-Fi interface here using the using uh, the SSID and password. Good. Uh, so here we go. So I told you we've got an RTC update process. So we are going to update the RTC time, get RTC time, all right. And uh, yeah, as I told you, like uh, we've put uh, the serial monitor, uh, which we've defined above, and uh, we are going to print different messages to be able to show us uh, at what point we are in our program, okay. Then, uh, yeah. So here we will, we will actually initialize our OLED display, okay? And uh, as uh, we use the I square C bus, uh, we can have in parallel various devices connected to the same, to the same I to C bus. So how does the system differentiate from it? It uses an address here to differentiate. Say, so I am addressing you. Excuse me. So it will say, I'm addressing that specific device. Okay. So now we've got the loop of things, what we do. So, uh, so we've got the main function, which is the watchdog. I don't have much time left, so we'll go quickly into it. 
So we've got the watch uh, daemon here. What it does is like it's constantly monitoring. This is the main part of the program. It constantly monitors the PIR. Okay. And now and then we've got uh, okay, we are here. PIR read. Okay. Two. Let's go into what is important. Okay. All right. So this is where we send the email. This function will send the email. All right. So it will be called with uh, the recipient email, uh, the subject, the message, and the message type. Okay. By message type, I mean, is it critical or is it not critical? So we'll see if uh, we can go through that. Okay. So this is what it is using as credential to log in. Okay. Just going to move up. Okay. Uh, what credential it is using uh, to connect to S the SMTP server and then send the mail. All right. All right, the watch daemon. The watch daemon is important, so let's go through it. This is the main logic of the device where alerts are sent. So the first thing is logging to to check if we are within that range of that the device should monitor things or not. So once it is in that range, then it is going to process and send alerts or not. If it is not in that range, it's not going to send alerts, of course. So uh, how, how are the alerts sent? So it's, it's a simple message, okay? The system has not monitored any movement for more than, okay, the, uh, the second inactivity alert, okay? And, and the recipient is going to send the recipient. So this is going to be the subject, send the type here. All right, so this is what is going to be sent via the email. So if it was critical threshold, so this is what it is going to send. So all those are based on conditions here. All right. Then what else? I think uh, as I don't have uh, too much time, we can have uh, like you can send me questions uh, and uh, we can talk about that. But what I would like is that uh, you guys, if you want to experiment with it, modify it and make something uh, that is uh, that can be really used and helpful to elderly people. So I think I'll uh, think I'm almost done. I don't have too much time. Okay. So let's go back to our slide. I don't know if I can do that demo. I'm just going to show you how everything is wired here. So I'm just going to move the camera now to the device itself. Uh, I don't know what you are seeing. Let me see if I can have a... Cool, cool. So this is the device and how it's wired. So you've got, uh, this is the OLED. This is uh, the PIR. Uh, this is the level shifter. Okay. So what I, I'm going to try to do is just uh, for you to okay, just to show you when it, it initializes. So you would see on the display, hopefully. Okay, here you go. Uh, can you can you see that? Can you see the display actually, guys? Okay. Yeah, All right. Yes, it's fine. Yes, it's fine. You, it, okay. you can move. You can zoom a bit. Okay. So here you go. There has been some movement that is that has been detected because I'm just in front of the PIR. So now that a movement has been detected, it normally sends me an alert on the email address that uh, something has movement has been uh, has been detected 
And if there's no, sorry, if no movement has been detected uh, for a certain period of time, then this is when I'll receive the, the, the alert. So that, that's about it. I'll end here. I know I've, uh, um, I have uh, taken uh, all of the time, so I'll leave some for some questions and comments. Okay, guys, that should be good for me. Ish, maybe you can uh, see column one. Please split one. Yes, that's done. That's done. Um, uh, thank you very much, Jovan. Uh, unfortunately, we were running out of time and we have to okay. end here. So, of course, I already posted a few things on Facebook, on Twitter. Guys, you can reach out to Jovan and uh, ask your questions. And uh, uh, if you would like to experiment further, Jovan is the co-founder of the Mauritius Makers community. They are present on Facebook. Join and uh, maybe in the, uh, how do you call that? Uh, in the next meetup, uh, you can all have uh, a demo together. Uh, Jovan, yes. thank you very much uh, for that the demo welcome. and for the presentation. Okay, yes. guys, bye. Yes, bye bye. And uh, we bye. are moving to our next presentation. Just give me two seconds here. So, Girish, can you say two words about our next presentation, uh, our next presenter? And then we will take a short break of uh, four to five minutes. Okay. Yeah, so the next presentation is pre-recorded, so I will just present to you guys the title and uh, the speaker, and after that, we will just play the video. Good? Yes, uh, th that yes that's fine. Okay, so it will be on printed circuit boards, design and manufacturing. It will be done by Nathan Margot, who is a maker and who is a maker, member of uh, Storm, CyberStorm, MU, and is a student yeah, he's a he's a high school student. All okay, right, that's all right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we are twelve fifty two in three minutes. Uh, uh, we should be live with the video, guys. We're gonna take a short break here. So here we go.